Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And today, we are going to talk about something before our evening show that you guys need to know about. Particularly, it's around a few different snippets that gun controllers have been just playing just the... Uh, just the front with, with our gun rights, because this is important around Ethan's law, something that Chuck Schumer said last night, something that the other Democrats in the Senate have said last week. This is going to tie the entire thing together, and everything will be linked in the description box below. And please let me hear from you on this one, because this is an important thing to know while we go into this fight this week with Chuck coming in with his new assault weapons bans and other bills i.e. this. Now, of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. We are distrib distributing freedom twice daily, and we'd love to have you help spread the Second Amendment around to and fro. All right, my brothers and sisters, I've got to show you something. Again, remember what we talked about with Chuck Schumer introducing the assault weapons ban and then other bills? Well, one of those other bills is something called Ethan's Law. Now, that might sound familiar to you because Blumenthal, Senator Blumenthal said this in the chairman, or excuse me, in the uh, Senate committee last week. And listen to what he said along with the witness. This is crucially important. Let's get into this. I'll show you some backstory as well. There are loaded and unlocked guns in the homes of 4.6 million American children, like the son of that law enforcement officer you described. I've been an advocate of Ethan's law passed in the Connecticut legislature and introduced it here in Congress, along with Representative Rosa DeLauro on the House side, which would prohibit unsecured storage of firearms. Could you speak to how secured storage helps reduce suicides or other supposedly accidental? I don't know what the supposedly there is, but anyway, let's get past that. Um, he said something very important. Loaded and unlocked and unsecured firearms with 4.5 million children in their homes. Now, then he referenced something called Ethan's Law, but let me show you exactly what happened in the case that this entire law is named for, Ethan's Song. Now, I want to be extremely sensitive about what I'm about to show you because this does involve the suicide of a minor. This is terrible. I don't want this to happen to anybody else. And responsibility can prevent these things from happening, not a legislative mandate at the behest of a tragedy. I don't want this to be happening ever. But anyway, let's continue because this is some sensitive stuff. And then I'll show you what the witness responded with. This is from the report of the state's attorney for the judicial district of Waterbury County concerning the investigation in the death of Ethan Song in Connecticut, what he was just referencing. Listen to what and read what I've got highlighted here. Mr. Song did not reside at this location, and he was not related to the gun owner. This handgun was one of three, which was owned by an adult male who resided in the home. On the date in question, it appears that all three weapons had been stored in a cardboard box inside of a large Tupperware container in a closet. Each weapon was secured with an operable gun lock, which means it works. There is no evidence that the gun used was loaded at the time, and it was stored within the closet. Had a gun lock on it that was operable, there was no ammunition stored inside of it, so what's Blumenthal talking about in the Senate committee? He's, the, everything that the law is named for doesn't actually coincide with what he's talking about. One more thing for you, then we'll get to the witness. This witness is the payoff. An exhaustive review has determined that during the months prior to January 31, 2018, juveniles had gained access to the adult male's weapon and played with them on several occasions. It appears that the weapons were returned to their original location after each access, and there is no evidence that the gun owner knew that the guns had been retrieved by the juveniles. Rather, it appears that there was a deliberate attempt by the juveniles to withhold this information from the gun owner. Does that sound at all like what Blumenthal was postulating as the fact across the board. Now let me get you to the witnesses. This is the witness in a Senate committee hearing, which we covered. This is Dr. Megan Rainey. Check this out. But I will emphasize that the legislation alone is not enough. It needs to be matched with community engagement, um, with enforcement, with education. Um, many of the firearm groups that I work with are tremendous advocates for safer storage of firearms. Um, and there are ways to do this again without abrogating gun owners' rights without abrogating gun owners' rights or fancy word for infringing upon people's rights or coming and stepping upon people's rights. Um, you just said enforcement. 
how are you going to enforce where anything is? That's what Ethan's law is. Ethan's law is a mandated safe, secure uh, storage law. That's the entire law. Now, in order to do that, they need things like universal background checks. Oh my goodness. Chuck Schumer just just introduced universal background checks. Weird how all of that works. Again, the impetus for this did not match the case in question, as horrible as it is. Then this witness comes out and says, yes, but enforcement is, in, is essential because legislation is not enough. Don't believe me? This is talking to another senator, exact same witness. How do we identify risk and protective factors? And then how do we intervene? Again, in the same way that we intervene for heart disease. Maybe there are medications. Maybe there are counseling efforts like teaching people about obesity um, or smoking. Um, and then potentially there may be legislation, um, but legislation alone is never sufficient. Potentially there may be legislation, i.e. Ethan's law, which the senators are pushing, um, but it's never sufficient going back to enforcement. Well, the only way that you can mandate enforcement of what the guns are and where they're stored is if you know where they all are. The only way you can do that is if you have a national registry. Oh my goodness, he just put in universal background checks, which means it's a registry of every single firearm, partnering with Ethan's Law in the same introduction. This is an important thing to understand the history of what they're talking about, which is why I'm showing you, and also what they're not afraid to say in front of a Senate committee hearing. It's about enforcement because the law is not enough. And that's what I've got for you guys. Thanks for sitting through the midday snack. We're going to go right to the dinner show after this, and I can't wait to see you there. I am Braden. Thanks for tuning in.